wolves, like, you can feel that they really try hard. If they would get like another lane that puts a lot of pressure, like right now it's only bot lane, the mid lane and the top lane, they, they don't have much pressure on the map. You can also just focus on the on the bot lane or just abuse those two solo lanes because they're not as strong. So they need like another point on the map where they can apply pressure and then it's going to be good for them. Welcome back everyone to our fifth match of the day with SK Gaming facing the Copenhagen Wolves. The headset is currently 2-1 in favor of SK and both teams will be moving on to the playoffs. A win by SK though will secure them a first place seed in the playoffs while the Copenhagen Wolves need to play catch up and pick up a couple of wins and try and get back on par with those teams in third place. Yesterday, SK Gaming had a brilliant win against Fnatic to regain first place in Europe uh, in European LCS. And then earlier today, of course, they beat the super hot crew to further secure that first place spot. Yeah, in the game yesterday against Fnatic, they ran this very mobile composition with Karma, Evelyn, Trundle, Zix and Jinx. All of those champions have a slow, and Zix is the only champion without a movement speed buff himself. So the comp meant SK Gaming could kite team fights really well, and also rotate around the map, taking down turrets very, very fast, which was the key to victory for SK Gaming. And against Super Hot Crew, they actually managed to stall out the game and turn things around for a win here, despite them being very far behind. And Jess is on Ari. It's not something we see very often, but he actually performed really well on an Assassin. He talked about himself, yeah. how it's not been working for him, but this game actually, he played really well on it. And he used also the power from Ari and from that combo to chase the teleport from Freddy in the mid lane was very, very well done to just chase on and then catch out some people and then go to Baron. Once they picked up the Baron, they could just close out the game. And before they got that Baron, you know, they... They were behind with the middle inhibitor and managed to catch out one of them, turn things around. Our final game of the day yesterday saw the Wolves taking on Gambit. They brought Heimerdinger to town. Yes, brilliant stuff. And, they, and that win helped them move into the playoff spots with the Super Hot Crew's loss earlier today. That really secured it for them. Yeah, and Young Buck, he pulled out the Donger in the top lane against Gambit. And honestly, what a performance it was from him. He pressured Darren on Rise very hard in the early game, and while Diamond tried his best to shut down Youngbug, it was never an issue for him to just continue dominating the lane. And with Forgiven on Caitlyn and Kautot on Gragas, the Wolves were able to just siege down turrets and never gave Gambit a chance to actually get back in the game. Well, let's check out the starting lineups for this match. On the blue side, it's SK Gaming with Freddy in the top lane, Svenskeren in the jungle, Jezus the mid laner, and the duo of Candy Panda and N Rated. On the red side, we have Copenhagen Wolves with Youngbug in the top lane, Amazing in the jungle, Kautad is the mid laner, Forgiven as the AD carry, and Unlimited on the support. So let's talk about Champion Select here. We've seen a lot of bands being thrown towards the mid lane for a lot of these, uh, or for both of these teams really. For Jezus, we heard in the interview after the last game that his team have even been banning his champions away for him, which <laughs> made him a little bit sad, but he's quite happy to diversify a little bit and bring it out on Ari, which we definitely don't see regularly here in Europe. Yeah, and we didn't really expect it again, because he's a type who's been performing so well when he's playing Nidalee, when he's playing Zix, he's like his two main champions, and every time he picks them up, he does really well. So that's what you expect him to play here. And that's also why I think Copenhagen Wolves are definitely gonna ban away at least the Nidalee. Wouldn't surprise me if they ban away Zix, but I'm not 100% sure they will do it. Uh, on the other side, SK Gaming. Amazing loves to play Lee Sin. Fantastic player on it here. Svenskeren, I don't think actually we've seen him pull out Lee Sin in many, many weeks. Could be a ban for them actually to take it away. We've seen Yasuo being banned against Copenhagen Wolves beforehand. We've also seen SK actually ban it away because you don't really want to deal with this champion if you play something like Nidalee in the lane where you're weak early on and Yasuo in the first few levels can put a lot of pressure onto you. Kauta has been playing it in the past, been doing really well. So it wouldn't surprise me to see it banned away. And we've seen quite a lot of those poke combos actually coming to fruition here today as well. And, uh, you know, we saw the last game, of course, was a win for it. it was ahead in the Super Hot Crew versus SK game, which was turned around. And Jezza said, we play a lot of Nidalee ourselves. Is that Nidalee, you think, uh, something that they, they will go for if left open? Well, if it's left open, yeah, definitely. I'm not sure they're going to first pick it, but they want to get it... After maybe the first pick in the second rotation, I think they're just going to lock in Nidalee and be happy with it. Even though he's going to lose laning phase, going to fall behind, doesn't matter. Get out of laning phase, get your death cap, just start landing the spears. That's what you do with Nidalee. Lee. So that's why I expect Copenhagen Wolves to ban the way. I don't even actually think they... I think it might even be the first ban, just instant. Nidalee Lee's gone, that's it. And if you didn't look at the other bans for them, Evelyn. So, Svenskern, 
It's been his go-to champion now where Kha'Zix didn't work for him. Pantheon a few times, but as soon as Evelyn is open, he normally actually picks it. Could also be a potential ban for him. Amazing, he has decent enough champion pool. Like, he plays this Zen, he plays Elise, Evelyn, Kha'Zix. He got, he got a lot of champions here, so for him, even though they ban away two or three junglers, it shouldn't be an issue for him to find something to play. What do we think to the bottom lane? Because if we look back at SK versus Super Hot Crew, it was Kha'Zix, Yasuo, and Ryze that they banned out, but Super Hot Crew actually banned quite a lot and this bottom lane, they took out two supports and they took out Vayne. Well, banning away something like Leona against Unlimited is definitely not a bad thing. He's so strong on it. He's always the guy doing the engages. Or you can try and target out for Given, ban something like Lucian, pick the Caitlyn away from him. But he's shown in, the, shown in the past. He can also play Jinx, he can play Ezreal. There are multiple options for him. So, the nearly question is already answered here. Taken away along with Lulu by the Wolves. Other side also, all about the mid lane so far. Gragas, Ryze, Ziggs all taken out by SK Gaming. That's going to give us some interesting picks then in this mid lane now. Yeah, well, Yasuo is still open for Kyle Torch, so I don't actually think he's too worried about this Ziggs ban. Hurting Jesse a little bit too, unless he's got something up his sleeves. It could be a LeBlanc pick, actually. Are we going to see Heimerdinger as well? That is definitely a question to be asked. And Renekton actually taken out here. Interestingly enough, we know how strong Freddy is with that one, we know how strong Youngbook is with that one as well, so this is going to be a real interesting pick phase. First one, though, is going to be coming in for SK, Evelyn for Spencer. Yeah, so I actually expected Copenhagen Wolves to ban away this Evelyn because it's been the first pick for SK Gaming now when they stopped playing Kha'Zix because it didn't work for them, so Evelyn is always the go-to jungler now for Svenskr. All the early game pressure you actually need. Just by farming, you apply the pressure because you're of course stealth. You need deep wards or pink wards to spot out the Evelyn here. So very standard first pick for SK Gaming, but it means over Copenhagen Wolves side, of course, Kha'Zix is left open. Very, very, very strong jungler. And give it to someone like Amazing, who's really proven in the past, he can carry games. It's gonna be scary. He can. That's also the first time that we're gonna be seeing the Wolves and Amazing taking the Kha'Zix into their lineup. Real interested to see how that one all works around. What are they gonna go with here in terms of AD carry? Someone like Candy Panda has proved how diverse his pool is. He can play pretty much everything that you'd give him. Lucian could be a good option, or they can actually have Unlimited now. Seems at least they're hovering over this Karma. Falling back on... Nope, switch it over. Fair enough. It's gonna be Jinx actually with both Lucian and Caitlyn open. They decide to pick Jinx here, so... Showing the hand a little bit early on with Jinx and Kha'Zix, you have a lot of uh, reset and kill potential here because you got so much single target nuke, especially with the rocket onto as an execute here if someone drops low. Then you get the reset on Kha'Zix and you get, of course, the passive proc onto Jinx here. So Cobaling and Wolves could be going for a bit of a single target combo now. Leaves things open for SK in that bottom lane. There's some strong combos, Lucian, Thresh. Lucian Blitzcrank maybe Enraged to this. I think one of two supports that you would consider as a Blitzcrank player along with JRE. And Blitzcrank against something like Jinx, very, very scary, especially out of the laning phase. Because again, your mobility, you don't have anything unless you get a kill on assist here. So it's gonna be a very easy target for, for Enraged to hit here, hook him in, or Leon, of course, can do the same thing, land the ultimate onto the face of Jinx, and then you can start the team fight. So SK Gaming side, if they get Svenskan to move around, the lineup here of Copenhagen Wolves, land the ultimate from Leona, and then he comes in from the backside or from the side, onto someone like Jinx. That's it, you're dead. So, with this round, we're gonna find out whether we'll see the return of Heimerdinger for Youngbook. I mean, they managed to beat Gambit with Heimerdinger in the top lane. The question is, does do they feel confident enough to bring that out here once again? Freddy has surely prepared himself for playing against the Heimendinger. Yeah, we need also to see if they want to blind pick it, because SK Gaming picked the bot lane and they picked the jungle. So both their solo laners are still left open. Copenhagen Wolves are forced to pick one of them here, so they will show something where SK can try and counter it. So I'm not sure if Youngbug is confident enough in his Heimer that he can just pick it blind and say, you know what, I'm not afraid of anything Freddy is playing. Well, let's see. Jacks, an option certainly, but a little bit of a dangerous one, you might say, <laughs> just to blind. But you, again, you've got to do it again. You've got so many mid laners out here that they might want to save those mid laners until the last. Yeah, saving for the last mid lane wise is smart with all these banned away, and they don't really know what Jesus is going to pick here with both Nidalee and Ziggs being banned away. Um, and this Jax pick, it explains the Renekton ban from them because they don't want to risk losing the lane early on with, with Jax against Renekton. And now, if there's an Aatrox or Shivana, then Jax will be able to farm against it. So it explains the ban at least from Renekton, but still blind picking Jax can be a little bit risky. 
We'll see what SK go with Freddy himself, who uh, has played a couple of uh, different champions, and, and Jax himself, actually, last time was against Rockat. He's currently hovering over Shivana. Shivana and Ecton really have been the two champions for Freddy to go to. Ooh, we see Jezus actually picking up this Kale for the mid lane again. Another champion that we've seen many a time for him. Not that many champions really left open for him to pick five mid lane bands out of six in this game. And I actually really like this pick up here because again, the first two champions from Copenhagen Wolves, they want to go towards the target. Yes, the rocket is AOE, but still, you want to get the execute damage onto whoever is low actually. So he can manage now with his ultimate to stop them from getting this kill, the first kill, get the reset, get the passive proc on Jinx. So it's very smart pick up with the kill. It can actually destroy a lot of the things from Copenhagen Wolves combo. However, Jax against Shivana, both of them will be able to farm early on here, and then Jax going into the late game. Once he gets the Blades Rune King, gets the Trinity Force, he's gonna be so scary to deal with, especially if he decides to just stay and split push with Teleport, so you can always join down with the team, always get a lot of farm. But of course, with the four picks from Copenhagen Wolves, kind of destroy the idea behind a Yasuo because there's, <laughs> there's actually nothing really to set his ultimate up. Well, let's see then. Wolves really running the clock down on this one to find that mid laner. Are they gonna pull out Zyra? That's that is the, old school. That is that is old school Kautard, and well, we may say this is new school. I mean, Zerath being picked up. We've seen him twice already in the LCS. His effectiveness questionable though. Yeah, Kauta played him before, didn't really have much of an impact in the game, but it was a game Copenhagen and Wolves didn't actually do too much in, so we can't only blame the mid lane pick there. So we're gonna see him now against this Kale in the laning phase. He should be able to get at least some good poke onto Kale, but it's gonna be hard for him to kill him simply due to the ultimate, of course, onto GSS here. But with this combo again, so you have your stun onto uh, Seraph to set everything up. You have, of course, Youngbug who can jump in and with his Counter Strike and get land a stun too. And then you just need Jinx, you need uh, the Kha'Zix to jump onto this target, instant blow them down. So that's where the burst, at least, from Seraph is gonna help in a lot, getting this first kill. But this ultimate over here from Jesus is gonna be so important. And in general, if you look at the combo from SK, they just got a bit of everything here. You got good engage, you wave play is fine with both Kale and Lucian, and also, of course, Shivana is gonna be very tanky in the late game together with Evelyn. Interesting to see how the Wolves do in this one. They're on a three-game winning streak right now, beating Gambit yesterday, of course, a very big win for them. And with those champions selected, let's have a look at your votes on lolesports.com. According to the numbers, it looks like SK are your favorites at 68% of the vote. I actually expected them to get more votes here when they are the number one team in the standings at the moment. Yes, Copenhagen Wolves a very strong team. Definitely going into the playoffs as one of the underdogs who can always surprise here. But uh, we're going to see how the game goes. I like the combo here, especially from SK Gaming, because it's a lot more safe. The Seraph pick here, I'm not 100% sure what to expect from it. And then again, the ultimate from Jesus can just destroy so much for Copenhagen Wolves. Well, it's going to be interesting to see. Of course, SK Gaming can solidify and, well, claim the first place spot, the first place seed going in towards playoffs if they can beat the Copenhagen Wolves here today. We are in game then. It's SK versus the Copenhagen Wolves. The next few minutes are going to be quite a bit more than just a few. Uh, we're going to find <laughs> out if SK Gaming can turn what looked like a bit of a dodgy season, if we look right back to the start, into a first place title. And that would be so impressive. I remember the first few weeks, everyone was talking about SK Gaming. Yeah, you know, they were an all right team, still a new team trying to figure out the things. And nobody expected them to now come here and actually be able to get the first place. So, will we see any action at level one this time around? Currently, we have the full on line set up from both teams. I'm just uh, checking out that bush and seeing if anyone was hiding inside of it. And not for now, but they do have Evelyn who, you know, if Svenskren's feeling adventurous, can do a little bit of a deeper scout. Yeah, he just needs to be careful not to actually face checking into a bush where there's a car six who's gonna hit you pretty hard in the face. But up in top lane here, Item wise, we see actually Youngbug with the Dawn's Blade. So he wants to get control of the lane early on. He wants to get ahead in CS because, again, Shivana, the first few levels is very weak. She needs a few levels on her abilities before she can really start fighting back. She needs some items here. So Youngbug is looking to dominate the lane a little bit early on and try and push him down. Counts out there just getting the first bit of damage of the game onto Jezza. So he gets, he wins that little mind game. But look Ooh. at this, we are in fact... That's actually pretty important. Yeah, a lot of damage actually coming in. We are seeing swaps coming around though. 
Well, Covenant Wars is a team who absolutely who loves to swap, especially against something like Evelyn, because you want to make sure you can always see where she is. And if you lane swap against Evelyn, you force her to either go defend the turret or go dive a turret. So that's what you expect from the jungler anyway, so you won't really get surprised by her. Look at this late invade from SK Gaming, moving over towards that red buff. We are going to be seeing Jinx and Karma in the top lane. Jax down bottom. And that switch will be coming in here in just a second. They've left for, uh, Svenskren just to smite that one off. And there we see the red buff now will be pretty obvious because they've just come from the Copenhagen Wolves side of the jungle. And they're going to get the 2v2 back that SK wanted. Well, this is a bit mixed for SK. Getting Leona against Karma in the laning phase is not ideal. You're going to get a lot of poke. It's hard for you to actually engage onto him. But at the same time, you want to have standard lanes, again, when you have Evelyn, because you apply so much pressure in the standard lanes, it's very risky for someone to go aggressive, because you don't know if Evelyn is nearby. And Svenskan actually did a very smart thing. He took the red buff, and then he instantly went to his own red buff. He didn't go to his blue buff, take it, and then take a long route around. He instantly went to red buff, make sure he could pick up a second one. So now three buffs over to SK, and only one to the side of Copenhagen Wolves. Should be at least, unless the wolves actually go down there here and uh, check out that blue buff. And they're probably feeling that with the red gone, that Svenskan will just pass straight over on towards his blue buff. And in the end, they will get that three for one buff trade. So let's talk a little bit about this lane at the top. We've already seen the SK Gaming struggling with the poke out of Unlimited. Yeah, it is expected early on. A lot of poke onto Karma. She's one of the best supports when it comes to laning phase because you got so much damage. You got a shield, you got a snare, of course. You're very safe. But Jinx can actually be the target here because Svenskeren with double buff, he's down to 50%. He can still actually gank because his potion is running here. So expect him to come towards the top lane. No ping ward, of course, early on from Covering Wall, so they won't see him coming up actually here. And he's actually pinging. So we need to see if Enraider can land some CC and then SK can start everything. And Corbin was very far up. And there is Enraider max range on the Zenny play. The Chompers go down, but Svenskren is right in the middle of them. And he's taking too much damage here. He may just fall. Forgiven will go down first. That'll be first blood going over to SK. Unlimited gets away. Incru crucially, Svenskren also was able to escape. Yeah, and SK Gaming invested all their flashes onto this kill here, but they picked up the first blood on the AD carry, so he won't be able to get some farm now. Candy Panda can get back in CS and push the lane a little bit, get some good XP here, so very nice gank. And Copenhagen Wolves, they didn't actually expect it because of the route Svenskan took before, because he went down to his red buff, they expected him to go from their red buff to his blue, to his red, and be around the bottom lane area, and that's why they just pushed up so far. Amazing, actually, just checking that mid lane, but unfortunately for him, Jezus had already gone back. If you look at Jezus though, he did use a flash in there somewhere. So Kaltod obviously uh, making a bit of an impact on this one. This bottom lane, as we expected, the Doran's Blade start for the Jacks here for Youngbuck, 33 to 24 CS, yes, just bullying Freddy a little in the lane. Yeah, so again, Covering Wolves can be just happy with this, even though they gave up the first bot to Evelyn and it's annoying, they're still getting this Jax against Shivana 1v1. And that's where they can get a lot of farm and where Youngbuck can continue just dominating him. But he needs to be careful because Svenskan is close. And again, there's no idea he's here. He's still with the double buff. Yeah, that double buff running. Freddy not going to step out from this one too far. And there is the pushing burnout going down. Svenskan going to show himself while we counter strike up here. Won't be able to get the kill onto Youngbuck. He can just walk back off to safety. And SK here just wanted to try and force away the flash. because getting a kill early on with Evelyn and Shivana. No CC at all. So it's very hard to lock someone down. So they just want to see if Youngbuck would flash away instantly. But he's wise enough. Didn't. And didn't actually take any damage from it. No, but Svenska is actually making another appearance in the lanes. This time, he's going to go head-to-head -head with Kautard. Jezus a little bit far back from this one. It's a good stun from Kautard, and that will stop Svenska and going any further. Meanwhile, in the top lane, we can see they're pushed up very, very heavily. Will they go aggressive to stop this one happening? Yes, they will. They dove on towards Forgiven. Have they got the damage to finish him off here, though? Tori actually hitting Unlimited here as well. So that's quite a lot of damage done on towards the Copenhagen Wolves. And look at the timing here from, from Enrated. He saw the sap, and he it would hit Candy Panda, so he engaged because the turret then would go on to Forgiven if you locked him down. So actually an extra turret on to Forgiven and then unlimited afterwards. So very good timing on the engage here from Enraider. Oh, ultimate coming across from oh, Kautard! Jezus goes down, he uses the third charge to even get some damage onto Svenskorn as well. 
And I think that's the first good Zareth ultimate we've seen in three games that he's been picked. But man, due to the fact that Kartra got a head in XP, so he got the level 6 before Jesus, and then he forced him all the way away from this wave here, where he would have hit the level 6 mark, and he just, boom, instantly killed him when the ultimate was ready. So this bottom lane now, it's Freddy actually feeling a little bit more comfortable in that one. Youngbuck actually at half HP right now, as Freddy uh, has been pushing that one a little bit further back. And because Evelyn's been in there, Youngbuck's probably thinking, you know, it's hard for him to say, okay, I can put that dominance down, I can fight Freddy, because she, unless he sees Evelyn somewhere, he knows that that could always be in his lane. Two things, pressure from Evelyn, and then of course the fact that Freddy now hit level 6, so he's True. gonna actually be able to duel him better. And also now they got a little CC to break, but Sven's gonna check on to Amazing here. Oh, this is really bad news for him. He's got no flash available, and this is the kill. Amazing oh. just jumps in there, flattens him like a pancake with a jump, and that is the second <laughs> kill of the game for the Wolves. And you don't want to let a, a Kha'Zix get going, especially oh. someone who's had so much impact in the games as Amazing has. Yeah, again, we've seen it. In the games today, whenever there was a Kha'Zix, whenever he actually got a few kills, he would just take them and he would just roll with them and just become so strong. So getting his red buff and a kill here for Amazing, he's gonna be very happy. Down the bottom lane though, Kevin actually doing, or Freddy now doing a very good job getting even in CS. He was so far behind in Youngbug, in trouble, and he's always scared, afraid now to engage onto Freddy because with the ultimate, he's gonna be very, very strong. Bad times for Youngbug. We'll see how that one all develops. Amazing after getting that kill. On to Svenska and is now waiting here by the blue buff that, of course, will be given over to Kautard, who's got a good lead in CS here, around about 12 at this point, but that's going to be getting even larger for him. Young, but meanwhile, is getting some free fun down on the bottom because, of course, Freddy did push that lane up. He wanted to go home and spend some of his 68 CS gold that he's now got himself in there. He's going to come back in with almost a Sunfire Cape with the Giant Spell and that Chain Vest. Meanwhile, the top lane. They did put some good damage down there as SK backed away. That's what they've been doing so far, Copenhagen Wolves. Just push down the lane, get a few hits on the turret, back off. But SK have been doing a good job either first ganking and then second, just start a fight whenever they were at the turret. Engage onto the dual lane here from Copenhagen Wolves, force them away from the turret. But if they can continue pushing the wave down without being ganked, they should be able to pick it up in a few waves at least. But bottom lane wise, both of the top laners actually use the teleport. Let's have a look at this one. Svenskan once again moving towards the top lane. However, this is scary. The bug waiting inside of the brush. Will they go for this one? Unlimited moves towards Svenskan, and there is a solar flare flashed away from by Forgiven. They're going to try and turn this one around, but who are they going to go for? Svenskan, the initial target. Amazing goes low, but he's got that damage reduction as the Colin will knock him even further down. And in the end, a couple of uh, ultimates being used, a lot of damage, but no kills. And you actually saw Enrede flash away, even though he was on 50%, simply because of the rocket from Forgiven here. Didn't want to go any lower, so the rocket could kill him. That's why a win for Copenhagen Wolves, we can say. Forced away some summoners, but they had to use their flash on the Jinx, which is a big issue coming oh. in for the next gank from Svenskan, because he's going to be the target from Enrede. Kautar doing so much damage there in the mid lane to Jezus. Decides not to use his ultimate, but it's going to be enough to actually force Jezus away completely. And he will actually be picking up that stinger now. So let's see here now. Jezus really needs some help from Svenska. And Svenska has been twice in there just to actually hold the lane. And he's now taking all the poke from Kautard. But they need to do something about the Seri because he's going to be such a pain to deal with. Also, very, very large amount of damage going into the late game. So with this combo here from Covenant Wars, you have Jinx, a lot of damage late game. Seraph, a lot of damage. And of course, Jax combined with... Uh, Jax in the front line combined with a, with a Kha'Zix. I mean, the late game combo from Cobra and Wolves is very, very scary. Oh, top lane might be a little bit of danger here. Can you no flash. Up? Right next to Forgiven. Oh, but Enrated. He misses the Zenith Blade. Uh, <laughs> the direction was good. He just didn't quite have the range for him to actually get in there and make that one happen. But is he going to go further? He is, of course, level 6. Solar Play goes down. Barrier used here by Forgiven. Zenith Blade will land. Forgiven so very low. And then Rayton picks up that one. Unlimited having to back off with half HP as well. It's a nice kill for SK. And this is why Leona is such a strong pick against Jinx. This is why you often see people not early picking the Jinx because you need to see what you're going to lane against here. The flash was gone from the gang from Svenskern. Ultimate down from in raided, and then he saves actually both his Q and his E until the ultimate is gone. Then he activates it, so more CC piled on to Forgiven. I think he barely, he could barely do anything, he just got destroyed. 
And that leaves Unlimited all on his own in that top lane trying to get some farm. Down in the bottom lane, we have now seen that Young looks starting to be a little bit more comfortable in there. Double Doran's Blade and the Cutlass up against the workings of that Sunfire Cape that Freddy actually has. And that's the thing, once you get that level 6 on Jax, with every third attack from your ultimate, you can do a lot of damage. Once you get the Cutlass, so you got some sustain now, you got some more damage in the one we want. Makes it very hard for Shivana to actually respond to you. And Freddy, he's gone tank here from the, start, from the start, so we could potentially see him and his gaming focus more on team fighting, where GX of course won a split, which now in the top lane here, Mason going aggressive. Yeah, very aggressive, but again, using his ultimate, they thought they could maybe lock down Candy Panda. One thing they need to be careful of here, I was going to say Elise, and, uh, and of course, meant Evelyn, who is now waiting here from around the side, actually going to go in towards Unlimited, doesn't even need to use his ultimate at this point, he does get locked up, but the hate spike will finish it, there is the ulti going to go down, Solar Flare doesn't land, but forget and locked up by the Zenith Blade. Jezus and wandered up from middle as well, and that's two very good kills for SK. And SK Gaming are doing such a great job just punishing this early Jinx pick here. The whole combo with Evelyn and Leona makes it so hard for Forgiven to stay in lane because there's always the chance they can engage onto him and kill him. And they've been doing such a good job just shutting him down. And this is the guy who normally, when it comes to late game points for Copenhagen Wolves, is the big carry. And he's now 0-3. 0-3. Somehow he's still fairly level in CS. That's something that Forgiven always seems to do. Uh, whether he's behind or ahead in the lane, he's always spot on with the farm. They're probably going to have a good go at that turret. Actually, I tell a lie. They decided this now is a good time to actually back away and spend some of that gold here. Obviously, uh, just a little bit earlier on, Candy Panda had the pickaxe with that vamp scepter. Wanted that damage straight away. But since his last journey home, he got himself a BF sword now as well. Freddy actually stopping the recall from Youngbook here. Taking some damage for it, but it's fair enough. He delayed him at least going back, and both top laners just staying in the lane for now. Yeah, nothing really going to happen, I think, down on that bottom side. The Sunfire Cape is now done for Freddy on Shivana. This mid lane, though, the lead for Kaltard stays, and there's a lot of damage that can come out. Wave clear, massive range, of course, for that Zerath. You can see a big blast onto Jezus again. So much damage. Also getting some good damage onto the turret, actually, but Svensson closing in on Kautard now. Is he going to be able to kill him off? Flash is available here for Kautard. Should he need it? And actually, he just walks away. Amazing now, turning around. Going to go towards Svenskren. Didn't really think I, yeah, that he was going to get the kill there, I guess, but able to force him away and stop the pressure onto that mid lane. Meanwhile, Freddy's had a bit of a wander up into the jungle of Echo the Copenhagen Wolves. The blue buff is there, but he needs to be a little careful. Now the rest of his team, though, starting to come in. Svenskun did actually smite that one away. Who are they going to go for? It's Kautard at the back. He uses his barrier will flash over, but Dragon's following him, and that is a kill coming down. They've taken the top turret at the same time, and the blue buff. Great move from SK across the map. Oh, they're going down straight in as well. Unlimited's not going to escape that one. The trap's coming all over, but Youngbuck now coming in towards them. Forgiven going very low. The Colin actually coming out. He flashes to get out of range of that one. He does get the kill, but Youngbuck will get one back. That's three for one across the map. Actually, uh, Enrater did flash away from that one so that he couldn't be taken down. And now SK have done a dragon as well. Crazy. Okay, so a lot of things just happened. First of all, if we take the whole mid lane gank here where they force Kaltar back and then they actually rotate up to the blue buff, Freddy pushed out the bottom lane, so he rotated up the blue buff and Youngbuck, he just stayed farming down there. He didn't actually join up, that's why they could take the blue buff, engage onto Kaltar, take the kill, and now in top lane, it's the same thing we've seen after the first gank here from Svenskan, where he gave the lead to the SK bottom lane. He's just in raided every single time there's a chance, engages on, perfect engages every time. Candy Panda follows up and picks up kills after kills. So SK Gaming really been shutting down this top lane here. Or oh, bot lane, in the top lane. Outside is actually putting some good pressure onto mid and, well, there is Jax. Satisfying sound if you're a Copenhagen Wolves fan, he takes away the first turret of the game for the Wolves. And you have to imagine that the second one won't be too far away with the amount of damage that they've done to that middle outer turret of SK Gaming. There's a blue buff going over to Jezus. He's now, by the way, got his Nash's tooth done. We have to look a little bit about this at this Kha'Zix pick. It's the first time Amazing is playing it. Yes, he picked up a kill onto Svenskan when he face-checked him at red buff. But every single gang or counter gang we have seen has been 
unsuccessful. He's been coming in there trying to set something up, but people have just been backing off and nothing actually came from it. But Kautzer now onto Jesses. Yeah, that's the intervention used. Kautzer actually waiting here and only gets two charges of that ultimate off Svenskren. Did come around the side as well, but they definitely don't want to fight. That is a four versus two. Actually, Freddy going to get stunned up. This could be real dangerous for him. Jumper's going down. He's locked up here by Karma as well. Can they get in range to finish him off? Super Mega Death Rocket was miles away from Forgiven and Freddy's able to get out with his life. Yeah, and look what Freddy's doing all the time here. He's gonna push up the wave. Whenever Youngbug is just standing farming in the lane, then he rotates down with his team and tries to set something up again. Due to the SK Gaming forcing so many members from Kogang Rose to fight here in the mid lane, the bottom lane was just completely untouched and they just take a free turret. And are they going to stop here? Actually, Enrated went forward. Candy Panda started to come back. Svenskren is now in the Wolves jungle as well, so they can really make some waves here. And the Wolves need to be real careful because if they decide to just jump in on them, this could be bad news. Svenskren is going to get stunned up, but the point is going to be Kautan. He goes down. Svenskren gets the intervention. They lock up Forgiven. Double kill now for Genesis. So good rotation from SK Gaming. It's not over yet though. Amazing coming. Gonna go in there towards Candy Panda who uses the barrier. Flashes away as well. Amazing just getting out of range of the attacks there of Jezus off to the side doing himself down. Could be in a little bit of trouble but they start to turn around. Youngbuck will leap strike away. Freddy actually teleporting in as well. The wall's all very low from that one. There's minions here for SK. Can they get the fourth turret of the game? They can even dive them again here. Unlimited is without any mana. Youngbuck, they're going on him. They caught Youngbuck up in this one. He's going to get his counter strike off and leap strike away from danger. But this is definitely the turret going over towards SK Gaming. Not taking too much damage from that one. They are taking towers like nobody's business now. They are out playing Copenhagen and Wolves on the map. Every single rotation they make, get the bot lane turret, then they walk straight into the mid lane here with the ultimate from Jesses, with of course the shield from Svenskan with his own ultimate. He, were, he was just able to engage on the three members under the turret, just dive them straight up, pick up two kills, take the turret as well. So SK Gaming, the way they rotate around the map here, they punish Copenhagen and Wolves for being so far behind dual lane versus dual lane. And we see that one of the the problems I think that we've been hearing over and over about Zerath. Yes, he has great wave clear. Yes, he has great range and damage, but he is so, so very immobile that yeah. if you are even slightly out of position, especially against a team that can speed up there against Leona, who can put the CC right into the back line, you, you're going to die. And the same thing for Jinx. That's the whole issue for Copenhagen Wolves here. And we talked a little bit about it in Champs League, how SK could always start the fights. Svenskan coming around from the side and then Enraded landing to engage. And credit to Enraded. Every single time he wanted to engage something, it's been hitting straight on, set it up, and then people from SK could just pick up the kills left and right. Big wave of farm for Candy Panda as well. 20 CS ahead, but it's the kills and deaths that are really making the difference there. 3-1-3 three, three for Candy Panda. 0-5-1 for Forgiven. I don't remember a game where we saw nope. numbers like this out of Forgiven. But it's simply due to Svenskan being there early on where Copenhagen Wolves didn't expect him to gank because they thought he would take a different route around the jungle. And then from there on, the flash was used by Jinx and whenever there was a chance, they would just engage and shut him down with this Luna. So SK just punishing Copenhagen Wolves for early picking Jinx when there was nothing else locked in. Not have this many destinies. Week one is amazing. Gonna go very, very deep. They get the stun off Let's go. Well, look at the damage coming back. There's a great solar flare. They've caught Kautar at the backside. He has to flash away. And Rated going very deep. Zareth ultimate thrown out. And Rated trying to sidestep. Forgiven does get the kill. Candy Panda did live through that one though. And the Copenhagen Wolves defend, losing just one for one. So they actually trade one for one here because Copenhagen Wolves managed to get all the way up to their turret, so SK had to back off. And then Red had already engaged in, but Youngbug now very aggressive. Uh, I don't think he can keep up though with Candy Panda. He's gonna go down, and Candy Panda even was the one to pick of that kill. Youngbug thinking he was possibly a little bit stronger than he actually was overall in that. A little bit of a desperate move here, just wanted to get a kill because he's going to be one of the members who can actually turn the game around. If he can start split pushing and shutting down everyone, he will put so much pressure on the map. Picking up his first kill of the game. As I said, he's not had this many deaths since week one for the Copenhagen Wolves. Worrying times for them, although they have, of course, now got that playoff spot secure. But they're trying to push further up and get a better seed when it comes to these all-important playoffs. Meanwhile, Unlimited 
Starting off the dragon all on his own here. Probably not the best idea. Kazix was a little way off. SK just gonna walk in here and bully them out of there. Yeah, and Kartov was all the way up in their own jungle towards the red buff. He's down to 50% HP, so Company Wolves didn't really want to fight. I think they were just trying to sneak it, so the reason Unlimited started it was to see if did SK actually react to this one? Did they have any vision nearby? And of course they did, so they just moved in, he backed off. A dragon for SK Gaming, and they can just continue pushing up here. Their combo again. They can actually just dive onto Copenhagen Wolves if they want to, with the intervention, with a very tanky Evelyn and Leona. Two important items picked up here, though, for the Copenhagen Wolves in counter to the combo that SK Gaming have. Quick Silver Sash for Forgiven and the Mikhail's Crucible. So they have a bit more to work with when it comes to n to just dumping all the CC on them. Yeah, so again, of course, uh, Forgiven can get out of the CC here, but the Mikhail's if they manage to engage onto Kautar, it needs to be spot on, otherwise he's gonna die instantly. He's so squishy at the moment. There's so many members from SK who can get towards him and just shut him down. So, very important items, but it might not actually be enough for them here because they're just other members who can go down. Youngbuck, yes, he's starting to build a little bit tanky, but still, he can just be the target with so much damage from SK here with such a strong AD carry already. Enraged at exactly how tacky he is and just walks in from the backside, tries to zone the wolves away. That turret is at less than half HP as again the damage coming across the side. Amazing has to use his jump to get away from danger. SK taking turret number six, they're backing off now. And down here in the bottom lane, though, Young Buck should be able to pick this one up unless Freddy decides to teleport down to defend it. So he's just split pushing away like he should do. It's the only thing Copenhagen, Copenhagen Wolves can do at the moment. Try and defend before, wave clear as much as possible, and then just have Young Buck split pushing. If he hits the point where he can just kill everyone 1v1, then it's the key back for Copenhagen Wolves. They're gonna go Baron here, though. Actually, some good damage onto Enrated there will force SK to stop that move. Actually, we did see the turret go down in favor of Youngbuck on that bottom side. That's only the third of the game, actually, for the Wolves. Freddy actually decided to teleport after the turret died. He wanted to recall first by and then teleport down, but it was too late. So he didn't get much from it. But at least now, Youngbuck backing off from the bottom lane. They're just pushing it out from SK's side. And he's going to join in with the team here. Let's see if Copenhagen Wolves want to fight or try and catch out Freddy. Yeah, Freddy actually face checking into this one. He's going to have to use that Dragon to send off towards the rest of his team. There is Enraged moving to the side as well. They've locked up Kautar nicely. He's surely going to die. No, not enough damage, but the blast from Jezus will be enough to finish it. Now Forgiven being chased down. He had to use his flash to get away from that one as well. Meanwhile, they're now on towards Youngbuck. SK picking up a one for zero. That might buy him enough time to go do some good damage onto this in him turret. And we did see the Mikkels here being used by they put it on the car chart, so it, the first stun was just cleansed. But Unlimited is already, or Enraged was already on him, just stunned him the second time, and there you go. There's nothing Kautar could do. He was the target, he could just pile on him and kill him. Without Flash, without his own QSS or Banshees, he's still gonna be just dead meat. That was a little bit harsh, actually. No. He still have to invest quite a lot onto him to actually kill him, so. Well, I, you're not wrong. I don't think it's harsh in that respect. That's the maybe brutal reality of it here for the Copenhagen Wolves. SK, are they going to move up towards Baron? Actually, Freddy is headed to the bottom side. He's teleport halfway to coming off cooldown. And Can Defender is also moving in there with him. That's because that red buff is available on the bottom side of their jungle. Meanwhile, the rest of SK just clearing out wards over by that Baron pick. Got themselves a pink ward in position there so that they can clear out whatever the Copenhagen Wolves drop over the back. Yeah, the Baron Dance is starting here. SK with some good early wards and Copenhagen Wolves just staying in the area, making sure SK just don't start it instantly. They want to be nearby to at least try and extend a little bit, try and pick up some farm. And of course, the blue buff is going to be very important on Kaltors because if SK decides to start the Baron, with all the damage here from Seraph, long range, he can actually stay back and just fire onto them, get them very low, and then Copenhagen Wolves can start a fight and try and get some kills. Well, let's see, Freddy is now joining the rest of the team as Candy Panda dashes forward, actually forces the jump away from Amazing on Kha'Zix. And SK once again get in position to clear out the vision that the Wolves have bravely put down there. It's always a case of inching a, a little bit further forward and getting in range to throw that ward and then basically running away once you know that you've got that in. Youngbuck is not there. He does have teleport. He's gonna have to use teleport here if it's a challenge for this Baron. Or they can just try and steal it away with Seraph or with a smite from Amazing. If they don't feel they can actually fight for it, Youngbuck is still... He didn't teleport yet. So SK, here we go. All right, and the blue buff, uh, the Baron buff is stolen there by SK Gaming and now they're gonna try and chase him. They've already killed off Amazing. There he is the flash away, but look, 
Zareth can't go anywhere. The flash is used. He's going to be tracked down here by Freddy122. It's Candy Panda that comes in and steals that one. That's two men down for 30 seconds on Zareth, 20 seconds on Kazix. Young Buck is having to go at this bottom in a turret, but SK don't care about that. They're going straight for the base. Yeah, Teleport is ready on Freddy, so he can always come down if Young Buck decides to continue pushing. So they just want to get his inhibitor down. They know he won't be able to get all the way into their inhibitor. So SK Gaming, they don't care about it now. They might consider continuing forward on this one, although they've got some good money behind them. Everyone over uh, about 1,500 gold except the support to spend. So SK have a lot to go back and pick up to think about moving in for a next fight. But they've secured that first inhibitor of the game after taking down the Baron. There's only the base left for the Copenhagen Wolves, aside from that mid lane, of course. And again here for SK, the only thing they actually need to worry about is not wasting time. Because once Young Bog is actually split pushing here, if they let him get too much time to push all the way in without doing anything themselves, without going down to stop him from pushing, he should be able to get onto the inhibitor turret, possibly even the inhibitor, but it requires Copenhagen Wolves to really delay this game a lot. They need to just try and wait for it, don't get engaged on, because if he's down in the bottom lane and, Co and SK are pushing up to the top lane, he still needs to teleport up. It takes time before he can even join the fight, so they can just dive onto Copenhagen Wolves. It's the most tanky member for them, if you ignore Youngbot, is going to, of course, be the Kha'Zix, but he's he's not even that tanky. It's only actually his, his, uh, his ulti is going to help him out here, and they can just ignore him, because his damage is not there either. Right now, SK pushing in the top lane, and once again, wrestling control back vision-wise of the top side of the Copenhagen Wolves jungle. Forgiven's trying to push the super minion wave back in this mid lane, and SK will try and force it back in, making the Copenhagen Wolves choose between losing possible Nexus turrets and defending this second inhibitor that they go for. There's the calling coming out. A lot of damage to Kautar. Half of his health gone with that one. He's trying to put some back and actually doing some good damage in there. We see Karma as well. Also got some good poker. Svenskrin and Youngbuck going to go head to head. There is the stun coming out from Youngbuck. Svenskrin trying to kite him around. Youngbuck's now going to have to run away. There is the artillery coming over from Zerath. He didn't really do a lot of damage to Svenskrin and now amazing. He's going to come out of his invisibility and get picked off in the end by Jezus. Who is now on a rampage? They lock up Kautan as well. SK might be able to win the game here. Only three men left alive. There's 35 seconds on Amazing and Kautan, and SK are going for it. Surely going to be able to finish off the game right here. That Nexus turret is going low. Youngbuck really the one to save them as Forgiven gets locked up as well. He goes down. Now they focus on towards Youngbuck, and it's only unlimited. That's not going to help them out. Both Nexus turrets go down. The Nexus itself is finished off, and SK finished top of the European LCS Spring Split here. Absolutely incredible turnaround season from them. And such a dominant performance by the dual lane from SK here, combined with Svenskan help, helping them early on, and he just took the lead, and they just snowballed it, shut down the game completely. Covenant Wolves had no response to this SK team at all. And we can see what it means for them there. Candy Panda leading the rest of them over to shake hands with the Covenant Wolves who, quite frankly, just never really got rolling in that game. I have to say, N-Rated yes. was so, so good in this one. Spot on the entire game. Entire game. N-Rated did the MVP for me at least in this game. Such a dominant performance. Every single team fight was landing down the CC as well. We talked about how to make kills would help, but it wouldn't do enough as long as Invader could get onto the targets, and he just continued doing it. And once SK got a hit, they never gave Company Wolves a chance to farm up. They just continued to pressure, walked over to Baron, Picked up the Baron as well, and then just pushed onto the base. Also, Svenskren keeping up his... You know, this is what we always pointed out with SK. If they're to do well, Svenskren has to put pressure on everywhere. Evelyn's a perfect champion for that, and he, he was in the lanes the entire time. And that's why you ban Evelyn away, especially from a guy who's clearly shown his K6 was not good enough. Yeah. You don't have to worry about it. He's not been playing Lee Sin forever. He's at least... I don't think we've seen it in 4.4 yet. So there's a key champion for him. It's Evelyn. Second one is Pantheon. So you have these two to deal with here. Why don't you just ban away the Evelyn, make sure you don't have this early pressure onto you, which he provided. Like, there were even times where he ganked, not even going for the kill. He just wanted to go in, harass a little bit, put a little, you know, 
a little bit of some mind games here, saying, I'm actually around, I will stay around his lane to gank you in case you overextend. And he kept doing it early game, and whenever he went top lane, together with N-Rated and Candy Panda, they just picked up a kill. Let's talk about Zerath as well. That's the third time that we've seen him. He remains at a 0% win rate, and especially when, you know, the support on the other side is playing Leona, and he's doing so well with Leona. You're never going to have a good time with Zerath. Well, Kauta did well in the laning phase. One out, picked up a kill as well onto GSS, so his early game was very strong. But Seraph got the issue when it comes to team fights. Same issue, Jinx. Got the same with like Syndra, Velkos, all these champions with a lot of damage. They don't have any jumps. They're not very mobile, so they're very easy to shut down when you play something like Leona, when you play something like Evelyn to flank around him, land the slow here. So it's the same issue, but if you actually get ahead with them, if you get to the point where we can take Rocket in the last game as the example, if you get to the point where you get in and you can start sieging, it's a very, very strong champion. Yeah, and just to look down some of the other scores, Forgiven 1 6 1 was behind in CS. It was actually, we've never seen him die six times in a game all year for this one, but again, it's to be expected. I mean, 18 4 in kills by the end of it. That was a, a, a real rollover victory for SK. Once they got going, those fights were only going one way. Yeah, they got so far ahead and they had such a good combo to just continue engaging on to combining Wolves, never giving them a chance to farm up. So once they got ahead early on, it was just it was just one way for them. And that's where we gotta, gotta give credit to SK, because early in the season, the European teams tend to be very bad at closing out games. We've seen it so many times yeah. where you got a big lead and then you just continue farming around or dancing around Baron for like 15, 20 minutes. SK Gaming in this game, they said, you know what, we know exactly what we want to do, set up the right thing, set up the Baron here. Once Youngberg was down in the bottom lane, they just took the Baron instantly, and then they just never gave Coburn and Wolves a chance to farm up. And again, credit to the early game plan, you guys have Jinx, very easy to gank in the lane. We have Leona, we have Evelyn, we're just gonna walk up at level three or level four, get the f force, of, force away your flash, and then the next gank, you're gonna die. Well, a good win there for SK Gaming, and congratulations on that first place. We're gonna flash over to Shox, who's standing by with two of SK's players. Thank you very much, Joe, and the applause is uh, very much merited in first place going into playoffs, SK Gaming. Congratulations, Candy Panda and Arvated. Amazing performance in this game. Let's quickly gloss over this game. I saw you hovering over the Blitzcrank. Did your team say, no, you can't play it? No, nah, it was just a troll. <laughs> it was just a troll. Then tell me what you did go for in this comp. Well, we went for Leona, obviously, which worked very well. We just looked for the support that could engage, and it's all that offered it. <laughs> Uh, what confused me a little bit is that the Copenhagen Wolves, they banned out Lulu and then they f uh, first locked in Jinx, who is obviously doesn't have any escapes. Did you guys immediately think, oh, Sven Skirin, we got to send you there, we got to send you there? Sven Skirin got to do what? Uh, to send, send Skirin to gang Jinx, obviously. Yeah, I don't know why they second picked Jinx, maybe because they played it a lot, so they wanted to have it away from us, but... Like, Lucian, Leona versus Jinx Karmas, like, whoever gets the better ganks, who wins the lane, and we had Eve. They Kha'Zix was also a good ganker, but their timings were off and we are stronger in the 3v3, so we could beat them. Yeah, a lot of teams have been struggling against Kha'Zix, but you guys just let us through and it was no problem. Why was that? Uh, we didn't feel like it was such a threat in this game. We just felt like the overall pressure that Eve provided would have been a lot more than Kha'Zix does. So with Leona on top, we just covered it very well and we just kept the ganking at the right timings and that's all we needed. Was that the key for you guys? Because um, sometimes we see you struggling in the early game. Obviously, you're great in that mid game. Was that the key of Svenskir and does well for you guys in that early game? You're gonna have the game, or? Uh, yeah, sure. It's always great to have a jungler that can make like early pressure. So that way we can transition into the mid game where our rotations are like really, really strong. So that's what we want to do. Yeah, there's not a lot more to say about that game. You guys had a fantastic performance. That means you are locked in the first place. Candy, you've of course been with SK for a very long time, and it seems to me that even though SK hasn't had the longest winning streaks, they do seem the most consistent than they have been uh, for maybe even a couple of years. Do you feel the same? Yeah, I mean, SK was... I mean, there were some periods where they were like not that strong, but overall, I think they were always in the top five of Europe, so that's, that's fine, but it wasn't fine for me, so this... I'm really happy that we got the first place. And obviously, a lot is to thank on uh, your duo bot lane synergy, which is going extremely well. Can you tell me a little bit about how strong you think you are, and if you look in Europe, going into the playoffs, how this has grown? Well, I just feel like we have really good synergy in-game and outside of game as well. We are comparable persons, like, in everything, basically. So our relationship is really good, and we're able to adapt to everything the other one says and take critic as it is, critic. 
and I feel like we're improving together and that's the way to work. Absolutely. Uh, and for you and Rated, obviously, last year we were there with Fnatic, then you had a small break. How good do you feel that you are right now? How good does it feel for you personally to be in that first place in playoffs? It feels very well. Every LCS pit I've played, I was in first place. <laughs> so we're going to say it was all because of you? Yeah, no, <laughs> not at all. It's my team. My team does really well and we were working hard for this. So we feel really relieved right now going into the next split and ending up first right now going into playoffs is a really good, like, just really good overall. Absolutely, but you guys still have playoffs where you have a lot to prove. Tell me a little bit if you see the teams you're playing over the past few days, who do you think will be your biggest competitor? What will be the general uh, threats going into those playoffs? Well, I think we're actually better in playoffs. We, I think like the history has shown that we like better, like best of threes or best of fives, because we can adapt a lot. We have a lot of champions to adapt, and if someone pulls out something crazy, then we can pull out something crazy ourselves. So I think the players will be good. And if we prepare as well as we do now and put a little bit more effort for the week that's coming, I think we can, we can do very good in playoffs as well, yeah. And Rated can always pull out something crazy. How do you think it will go? Well, it's not only me. I think every one of us has something in their minds. And right now I feel like we're a very consistent team. And if we play our game, we will win. Yeah, a lot of team spirit here. Congratulations once again, guys. Really fantastic performance. Now, as for us, we need to take a quick break, but when we return, it is time for another classic battle between Gambit and Fnatic. With playoff seating on the line, this fight is sure to get bloody. Stay tuned. Wolves need to be real careful because if they decide to just jump in on them, this could be by new Svenskun. He's going to get stunned up, but the point is going to be Kautan. He goes down, Svenskun gets the intervention. They lock up Forgiven. Double kill now for Genesis. 